Hello, and welcome to this introduction to the MaxPro drain camera system. Throughout the course of this video, we will introduce you to all the features and benefits that make the MaxPro a leader in the drainage inspection industry. The first part that we're going to cover is mounting the Max Probe control box onto the frame. As with all the features of the Max Probe, this has been designed to be as straightforward as possible. Beneath the drag handle on the Max Probe frame is a mounting ledge, which marries up perfectly with the slot in the back of the control box. Bring the control box towards this ledge, leaning the top rear of the control box towards this ledge until a connection is made. Once connected, slowly release the box until it sits flush to the mounting plate and sits perfectly horizontal. In summary, when you're mounting the control box onto the frame, be sure to identify the mounting slot in the rear of the control box. Tilt the control box backwards, holding the handle and supporting the weight with the other hand. Position the control box above the mounting ledge, lining the ledge up with the mounting slot. Lower the control box down until it cannot go any further down and the weight is fully supported by the frame. And finally, when the box is mounted, it should be sitting level horizontal. Next up are magnetic clips which secure the keyboard cover when the control box is not in use. This might seem like a minor thing to note, but again, research and customer feedback have aided this development. There are two clips, one either side, that, when released, will allow the keyboard cover to drop down and into use. It is very important to note that this keyboard cover is not a weight-bearing structure, and therefore at no point should you lean on this, as you could break the hinges as a result. Before you go any further, simply push the clips in so that they connect with the magnets to stop them snagging on any loose clothing. From here, you are ready to go, so press the power button and let the control box load up. Also, if you would like your own company logo to appear on the loading screen, simply contact ScanProbe directly to arrange this. Once the loading sequence is complete, press the enter key to get started. In summary, simply flick the two catches found either side of the control box forward towards the front of the control box in order to open it. Remember to lower the lid carefully not to slam it down on the frame. And when open, push the clips inwards towards the magnet on the side of the control box to stow them away from snagging on loose clothing. It is very important to remember that you should not lean on the keyboard as this can damage the hinges on the box and put your control box out of action. It is important to understand that this sort of damage would not be covered under your warranty. Okay, moving on now to the contents of the accessories bag that comes with your brand new Max Pro purchase. In no particular order, a four inch slip skid, a six inch sculpted skid, a 12 volt power lead, a 110 volt power lead, a 240 volt power lead, a 240 volt power supply unit, a pair of camera head spanners, and finally a USB stick to transfer your recordings. In summary, with all Max Probe purchases, you will receive an accessories bag containing the following. A 4-inch and a 6-inch camera head skid, a 12-volt, 110-volt and 240-volt charging cable, a 16GB USB drive and two camera head spanners. You will also receive camera and rod dust caps which will be fitted to the rod and camera head and also two rubber buns which will be in the rear of the control box.
In addition to the skids provided in the accessories bag, there are also some additional skids available to purchase separately. So again, in summary, we have additional skids available, which are the 130mm wheeled skid, the 180mm wheel skid, and the wheel trolley skid, which ranges from 150mm up to 300mm. Simply inquire to ScanProbe for more information. Next up, we will go through how to connect the camera head to the rod. If your camera head has not come to your you will have metal dust caps on both the rod connector and the rod, which you will need to unscrew and remove. Yeah. 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 We always recommend having a camera skid on at all times, and these can only be applied when the camera head is disconnected. At this stage, all you would need to do is place the rear connector of the camera skid onto the rod with the thread facing the connector. The camera head features a high quality lens and 12 LEDs to ensure a great image from within the pipe. Looking at the connectors, be sure to marry them up correctly, half moon to half moon so as to not damage the connection. When slotted together, tighten the connection by hand initially, as this will be easier than using the spanners. We will use those later. Placing a spanner in each set of grooves on the rod and camera head, gently tighten. Remember, this is not a test of strength, as over tightening could damage the connection. Finally, position the other half of the camera skid onto the camera and tighten with the rear connection. Pressing the lights up button on the right hand side of your keyboard, you can control the lights on your camera. This is great for the variable conditions underground. You can see how bright they are from the on-screen icon and the accompanying value. In summary, the camera can be disconnected for storage and maintenance purposes where needed. Metal dust caps are provided for both the camera and rod connectors and can be found in your accessories kit if not already connected. It is important to line the connectors up half moon to half moon. Remember to hand tighten the connector and finish with the spanners provided. Do not over tighten as this may damage the connector pins. We recommend that you have a camera skid on your camera at all times in order to protect the camera. To do so, firstly disconnect the camera head from the push rod and place the locking collar, which is the rear of the skid, over the push rod with the thread closest to the exposed end of the rod. Reconnect the camera head as shown before. And finally, place the front end of the skid over the camera and screw together to fasten. Operating the sonde, or beacon, is very straightforward with the Max Probe. It is located in the camera head, so it is perfect for detection purposes and also helps to keep it safe from damage which could occur if it were located within the camera spring or somewhere else on the rod. To operate the sonde, simply press the button located on the Max Probe axle, which will illuminate to let you know that the sonde is transmitting a signal. 
So, in summary, the sonde is switched on and off via a silver button located on the right hand side of the central axle of the Max Pro. You can tell when the sonde is switched on when the button is illuminated. The sonde itself is located in the camera head where it is protected and makes for greater accuracy when it is being located from the ground above. Looking now towards the control box, and there are two connector ports found here. One for video in from the camera, and the other to charge up the unit. Both connecting cables have a clear groove to display which way is up, in order to prevent against damage. Position your thumb within this groove on the connector, and make sure that your thumb is on the top as you move to plug in the connector. This will help you to line up the pins and avoid damaging them. Note that this is a simple plug-in motion, no twisting is required. When the ports are not in use, we recommend that you use the rubber buns provided to protect the ports from any moisture, dirt or ingress damage. The port on the right hand side is for charging your control box. Whilst charging, the box will display a red light, and this will turn green when fully charged. You can also refer to the icon on the screen. So, in summary, on the reverse of the control box, from left to right, is the charging indicator light, the camera connector port, which is 7 pin, the VGA connector, and the charging connector, which is 4 pin. When holding the cable connector, position your thumb in between the grooves on top of the connector. When not in use, protect the ports by using the rubber buns provided. And the charging light will display red when charging, and green when the box is fully charged. You can control the speed at which the pushrod and camera are released into your pipeline by using the handbrake. This is not a case of on or off. Use the handbrake to regulate the speed so that you can control your survey and avoid damaging the camera. Over time the roller can collect dirt and debris, so be sure to wipe this clean after use to avoid unnecessary wear to your pushrod. In summary, the handbrake is to be used when storing the camera system when not in use, but also when you are using it you only need to loosen the handbrake rather than let it go completely. The pushrod is guided in and out using the roller guide, and over time this can collect dirt and debris, so we recommend that this is cleaned regularly in order to remove buildup, which could, in turn, wear down the push rod. Lift up the rubber flap to the right of the screen, and you will uncover additional connector ports for two USB devices, and also audio in and out functions. The two USB ports can be used to copy survey data from the control box to give to clients or colleagues while still on site. The port in use will display on the screen. Plug in a microphone headset and the audio ports enable the user to record a verbal report on top of their video survey as a faster alternative. When not in use, seal down the rubber cover to protect from moisture and dirt ingress. Ok, so in summary, lift up the protective rubber cover to reveal the USB and audio in and out ports. The USB ports can be used to export reports and video and audio files. The audio in can be used to record a verbal report using an external microphone. The audio out can be used to review your verbal reports. 
and when not in use, be sure to press down on the rubber cover to seal the ports away and create a dry barrier away from moisture and other types of ingress. And that's your introduction to the Max Probe system. Check out our other videos to find out more, or if you have any other questions, contact a member of our team today.